Let's learn how to add text directly onto a 3D object. Now you're probably all familiar with the screen text, which is just kind of 2D text overlaid, or a text object, which you can attach to like the user's face and it moves around with them. But there's also a third option, but you add it down in the resources panel. So you come here, you can add a text texture. So I'm just going to rename this to text texture. So what the text texture does is it takes your text and it turns it into an image. So you can use it the same as a text object up here. Or what's really cool is since it's an image, we can actually apply it to a curved surface like the soup can. But it does take a little bit of setup. So I'm going to head over to my 3D software. I'm using Blender. So I just have here a simple soup can. And here I have the UV map. So if you aren't familiar with the UV map, it's essentially describing how the surface of your 3D object maps onto a 2D image. And that's how you get the texture to show up. So here I have the top and bottom lids on the gray. Then I have the cylinder parts of my can on this red and white portion of the image. And so over here, you can see my image applied to the soup can. Now, one thing I did do is I selected these faces here. And just to make it a little easier to see what's going on, I just gave it a different material, gave a black color, uh, just because this is, what, this is where I want my label to go. And by making it a different material, I can just kind of keep track of where on the can it's going to show up in relation to the rest of the image. So I have my second material here. I just help me out while I'm in uh, Blender. But also what I want to do with these faces is I want to create a second UV map. So in Blender, I just come over to the object data properties, open up UV maps, add a new one, super simple. And then with my vertices, or I'm sorry, my faces selected, I'm just going to unwrap those. Now they're over here, I'm going to select them. I want to rotate them 90 degrees because my selected face here is the last one. So I'm going to be the last one over here. I'm just going to grab that in and I just want to kind of scale this, fill in the space as much as possible. And once I've done that, I just need to export my object. So file export as FBX, and then you just save it out. So once you do that, um, hop back into Lens Studio, load your object or reload it if you need to. And let's get started with our materials. So if I select my soup can cylinder, you see I have my can, and then I have this other little section with label. So I already have a simple material set up called text. So if we look in the material editor, I'm just taking the input texture, multiplying it by a color, and then that's my final output. So when I set my text texture, I actually just leave it as white. So let's go ahead and add some text. And now in my material properties, I can change this color to change the color of the text. So let's select my text texture. And now I'll come back to the cylinder. Now, label is the material I want to change. So I'm going to go ahead and add text. And now you can see a few weird things going on. So the first issue is we can't really see the text. And that's because by default, when we make materials or we add UV coordinates, it's using surface UV chord zero. We want to use surface UV chord one which is our second UV map. So let's delete that and hook that up. Now you can see our text is now filling that space, but we can see behind it. And that is because the texture being applied here is just the text. So we also want to see what's behind it. Uh, so we want to go back to just the can. So here on my portion of the mesh that has the uh, text. I'm going to choose material and I'm going to go into my soup can, add the other one, drag it up to the top, 
And then on my text, let's go ahead and change that color so we can see it a little better. All right, so we can see it, but you kind of see how it's kind of flickering. That's because it's on the same level as our can texture. So we're just going to turn off depth test here in the material um, properties, and we are good. So we can change the color just right here. Let's go ahead and make it blue. And that is about it. Now, there are a few drawbacks with the text texture. Uh, so we can change the font. That does work. So you can import any font you want. But outline and drop shadow do not work. So that's just something to be aware of. If you're going to use the text texture, uh, you just get the straight up font. Now, the other issue is we have a predefined area where our text goes. And so if we have really short text, like high, it gets really stretched out. And if we put longer text, you can see that starts squishing together. And that's not necessarily something that we want either. So I do have a scalable text material here we can take a look at. So I'm just going to replace that. Let's add the text texture. All right, and let's go back to a short text just to take a quick look. Okay, so my scalable text, I can change the scale of the UVs. So let's put this to two. Um, so we shrink our text, but now you can see it's tiling. Now we can clamp the UV parameters. So let's come to the material editor. And so all I'm doing is I'm just scaling the coordinates and then clamping from zero to one. So that just gets you back to the original um, coordinates. Now this looks like it might work. Let's make this just a little bit bigger so we can see our text better. But there are still some issues here. You have to be aware of with clamp. So the word hello works fine. But let's change this to your name. And let's go to a different font. And now you can see we kind of get these bands coming off the sides. That's because when you clamp a texture, whatever is on the border of that texture, uh, it just kind of gets extended out in both directions. And so depending on your font and your letters, you might get these bands going out. So what I think is going on is the letter Y extends right to the very edge of, you can think of it as kind of like an image texture for that letter. And so it gets banded out. So you can see it doesn't happen with all letters, but Y is a pretty common one I see. Uh, so if you are going to try to clamp your UV cords, you just got to watch out for that. But usually uh, things work. They look OK enough if you just don't scale it. Just add the text there. So we have our text on the curved surface. Everything's good. But I mean, if we're just going to put some words here, we might as well have put it in our UV map over here um, in our 3D software. But if we use this text texture, now we can dynamically set it. So here I have a simple script I've already added to the scene called set name. So let's open up the script editor. So here I'm just going to grab the user's display name and I'm going to set it to the text here. Now, if I add like a text object or screen text, how I would add that is I put the input on my script. And so I would say something like script.canlabel.text equals name. But that does not work with the text texture. Instead, we're going to do script.canlabel.control, if I can spell, dot text, and set that equal to name. So if it's a text object, you just do script dot whatever name you gave it dot text. If it's a text texture, it's technically an image, so we can't directly set the text. So we have to go dot control 
dot text. And now if I save my script, you can see it updates to the user's display name over here. Uh, so you can use any of the dynamic text. Um, if you want to know what's available, uh, just look up the global user context system in the Lens Studio docs, and you can see what all you can access through the scripting API. All right, so hopefully you've been able to learn a couple things. Um, text texture um, is pretty cool. If you just need 2D text, just use what's built in. But if you need to stick your text on an object, especially if it needs to be dynamic, you want to put in like the date or the user's name or something, uh, the text texture is awesome. Uh, like we saw, it does have a few limitations, not everything's quite working, but uh, the ability to put the text on any surface is super cool. Uh, so go ahead and give those features a try and let's see what you can make.